Hello, everyone. Welcome to June 10th Community Connections. My name is Tara Spiegel. I am with Keohole Center for Sustainability. Uh, I have the privilege of introducing our special guest today. We have Adaptations Inc. joining us. Um, we have Maureen and Rosie, so they're going to introduce themselves in just a second here. For those of you who are joining us again, welcome back. Thanks for taking a week off with us to let the voices that need to be heard be heard last week. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. Welcome to Community Connections. This is a weekly program that we do to host members of our community that are innovating and adapting to these very interesting times that we are in right now with the pandemic, with our social injustice. And this gives us an opportunity to connect better with those people in our community, live more sustainably, um, and learn a little bit more about what is going on here on Big Island in Hawaii. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to these two lovely ladies so they can introduce themselves. Uh, Maureen, do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself first? Sure. Aloha everyone, I'm Maureen Dada and my husband Tane and I own Adaptations. We are a food hub, which is another word for a local produce company. We have a certified organic farm in Honau now in South Kona. And we market and distribute for about 75 farms each week. Um, some of them deliver to us and some of them we pick up from around the island. Uh, we have a warehouse in Kealakekua and uh, we have um, on our farm, we raise cinnamon and vegetables and herbs and edible flowers, microgreens, avocados, citrus, and exotic fruits. And our home are, is uh, solar powered. And we have a vermiculture and soil co composting system on the farm. So we're completely off the grid. Um, we hope to one day have our own building so that we can also solarize that and um, continue you know, contributing to our food system here in Hawaii without producing a lot of waste. Zero waste is really important in our company. We use um, plant-based plastics as much as possible for packaging and we portion using net bags that we retain here. So um, that helps us to lower our carbon footprint and feel good about little portions of things without contributing to single-use plastic waste. Um, I'd like to introduce Rosie, who's our Fresh Feast CSA coordinator. We'll switch Hi. to Rosie for a moment. All right, Rosie, you are up. All I right. think everybody knows your name now from us saying it, but. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rosie, <laughs> and uh, I've been managing the CSA Fresh Feast CSA program for adaptations for about seven years. Um, we used to do around 100 boxes a week. Um, however, since the beginning of COVID, it's been closer to around 300 CSA boxes every week, sometimes more. Um, and a CSA box is basically a subscription share of local produce. So it's a commitment you make to get local produ produce either every week or every other week. Um, we have three different share types. We have a basic share, a gourmet share, and a custom made share. Um, the basic and gourmet are set boxes where we decide what people get um, and it's whatever is seasonally abundant. And uh, the custom made share is like an online farmer's market that we run twice a week. Um, we deliver our boxes on Tuesdays and Fridays and um, people are able to log in online and order all kinds of fruits and vegetables and also breads and uh, honey and lots of uh, locally sourced uh, food related items. Um, and yeah, it's been really interesting uh, seeing how it's shifted through the last couple of months. Um, it's been a lot of changes, but uh, the community support has been really, really amazing. Our Big Island community is so special in their commitment to local produce and supporting farmers. It's really cool. Um, and yeah, we uh, 
feature produce from farms all over the Big Island. Um, and whatever we have it depends completely on, uh, you know, seasonal availability. We really uh, try to um, get people in touch with what's happening on the island currently and, you know, keep people kind of aware. People think in Hawaii we don't have seasons, but really our fruits are determining our seasons, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really great way to connect the farmers and uh, the people who live on the island. We deliver the boxes to about, I think, 10, more than 10 pickup sites all over the island. Um, we have a few spots in Kona that we go to, like the Windermill Realty Office, to Tara at Nelha. Um, and we also deliver to up the coast, all the way to Waimea and to Hilo. Um, and there's a lot more information about the specific pickup sites on our website, adaptationsaloha.com. Um, yeah, that's kind of the overview of the CSA. Um, Maureen, did you want to add in anything about it or any questions that I might have left hanging? <laughs> that was a really good digest of <laughs> what you do here and uh, what our program is. <laughs> And, and you all watching are going to hear me plug this several times just because I promise you, Rosie and Maureen have not paid me to say this, but I get their CSA boxes and it is amazing. I don't have to go to the grocery store for my vegetables. I am saving money. I know that it's local, so it doesn't come wrapped in anything. It comes, you know, in cardboard. So I compost the cardboard or reuse it. It's, it's amazing what you guys do with zero waste, but also making sure we get fresh, local, delicious vegetables cheaper than you can at the grocery store. So I am not paid to advertise this, but I <laughs> highly recommend. <laughs> and the fact that you can get honey and bread and everything else, it's not just vegetables and fruits, has been a lifesaver. <laughs> uh, last week, I think you guys had some dogs, um, Ulu sourdough. Yes, that's a that's new killer. one. The Ulu Olena. <laughs> It's been pretty popular. <laughs> it is. Are, it is amazing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. so I know you kind of touched on this a little bit, both of you, but we, we know we've seen some changes to this community through the pandemic, through COVID-19, and it's been very scary for a lot of people, uh, not knowing when we're going to get food or where we're going to get food. And then there seems to be this general trend if you if you will that people are realizing we have so much here on island that they didn't know about um yeah. do you want to both of you or one of you want to jump in first and share a little bit about what you saw happen with COVID out here what were some of the challenges you saw and sure. maybe what were some more of the positives yeah I think it's actually a really happy story but it has been fraught with a lot of concern, mostly for the family farmers. We really want to see these farms be able to transition away from growing for the gourmet high-end visitor industry and planting crops that are a little bit more appropriate for families in Kama Aina, uh, more vegetables, more fruits. Uh, on our farm, we had a greenhouse um, that was about a thousand square feet planted mostly in microgreens for the visitor industry. And those are like just a little bit above sprouts grown in soil that we harvest um, just after they form their first leaf. And uh, it's a beautiful garnish. It's packed with nutrition. Um, microgreens have all of the nutrition that the um, vegetable or uh, crop would produce, but it's all compacted into that little little sprout and so it's um, really nutrient dense food but it's also um, kind of more like a garnish or you know an edible garnish or you could put it in a wrap that kind of thing so we transitioned our greenhouse because we were growing maybe 130 bento boxes twice a week for the visitor industry and it dropped to you know six <laughs> for mid <laughs> mid march uh, and then um, we pivoted and had to create smaller containers to offer in the CSA, which actually has kept 
um, the production going uh, on a much smaller scale, but it opened up space for us to plant things like green beans and eggplants, um, carrots. Uh, we have radishes going. Um, the concern was that the value, you know, because most of the farms that we handle food from are less than five acres. So the concern was how does a farm continue to be able to make enough money to survive um, when you have to, you know, switch to a commodity crop rather than a gourmet high end margin. And, you know, the jury's still out. We're, we're doing our best to um, replace crops um, that are more universally desirable, but um, it's, it's hard and not every farm is going to make it. And um, that's really going to be our loss as a community. So the members who have, who have stepped up in the CSA to spread the word, every member that we have right now is our greatest ambassador. Uh, anyone who um, subscribes to Fresh Feast and then refers a member, they get a $10 in-store credit to be used um, for their next purchase. And so um, by kind of the coconut wireless is mostly how our membership has grown, but it really exploded to three times the size. And, um, one of the challenges we faced was that it all was happening once a week because we had um, just had a Tuesday pickup and we had to stop new signups for about two weeks while we reorganized and we added the Friday pickup day and had to shift a lot of our labor to um, to kind of cope with it happening twice a week rather than just once a week. Um, basically every system that our business had had to change and it had to change really quickly. And so it was really nerve wracking and the crew that we have um, was working overtime. Uh, I know a lot of people got bored during COVID, but I can assure you no one at Adaptations was bored. <laughs> we were all really, we were working a lot of um, big weeks. And, uh, and I think that it's been successful in that our weekly sales are now back to where they were pre-COVID and our customer base is 100% Kama Aina now, which feels really good to be able to feed Hawaii from Hawaii kind of a long-held dream that's been realized so silver linings with the COVID you want to add anything Rosie amazing and and when um, you say it tripled you guys you said you have over 300 members for your Fresh Feast CSA now and that's all local that's all Kamaina yeah, yeah and that's I just, every week it's not even the same 300 people every week we have like at this point i think it's over it's around 400 or 450 active members it's pretty wild yeah i actually i i ran a report this morning just to see who was not on hold and that sometimes is just a hold for a week but 393 active members okay. right now which is you know it's a lot it's, it's way more than we've ever dealt with and that's why we had to split it into two batches a week instead of trying to do it all at once so just logistically wasn't yeah. enough space and one of the biggest challenge yeah another logistic challenge that's come with covid is um our pickup sites have been in a lot of flux because we're really dependent on other businesses um, for that. And there have been so many shifts around us in the community as places close temporarily or change their policies or even, you know, are struggling to stay open. Um, we're finding that the kind of ongoing scramble is finding places and businesses that are open and willing to let us leave the boxes there for people to come pick them up. You know that, Tara, specifically with Nelha. <laughs> um, it's just taken a lot of uh, coordinating to make those changes happen. But we're adapting. It's the name of the game. <laughs> you're, you're very aptly named for the current yes. situation. <laughs> um, so My husband question? actually named adaptations, and it was primarily because adaptations are how we survive any species, in order to survive, you have to adapt. And that's where the name came from. It's perfectly suited to you and to what you're trying to accomplish on island right now. So he did a wonderful job <laughs> naming the company. Uh, one question I've had, 
Um, and I'm sure some of the people watching have some other questions. Please feel free to jot down any questions you have in the chat and we'll make sure we get them asked for you all. But something that's been on my mind is do you all, um, as a hub, do you sell to the grocery stores, to the local grocery stores, or how does that work? Uh, we sell to about 14 different retail stores. Um, we supply all of the Island Naturals on Island, uh, Healthways in Waimea, um, Abundant Life in Hilo. Uh, we supply uh, processors, so people like um, Ono Pops, who makes local uh, popsicles on Oahu. Um, the uh, chocolate companies use our cinnamon in their um, bars. Uh, we have Kona Coffee that we grow um, that goes to different processing facilities. Um, we also supply down to earth on Oahu and Maui, Whole Foods on Oahu and Maui. Um, and other natural food stores across the islands. The really interesting thing that um, came up is we're supplying other food hubs across the state. And um, I'm gonna put my hat on now for the Hawaii Farmers Union United because it is a nonprofit organization that is um, statewide with 13 chapters on four different islands. And the beauty of it is that every chapter has its own unique style. Their, um, the lay of the land is different, the crops they can grow is different in their region. And um, we're affiliated with each other. We hold monthly Zoom meetings now. Um, and then twice a year, we normally get together for strategic planning and for an annual convention. But it's, it's the small family farmer community that is being served by the Farmers Union. And the union helped um, fund and finance the, uh, up, they just started up two months ago on Maui and Haleakala chapter with a food hub there. Uh, also the HANA chapter just cre created an online marketplace food hub over in HANA, which is incredibly isolated, but they produce a lot of food. And so the magic that's happening is that the food in Hana, the abundance that is more than their community can consume is then being transported to Haleakala. And then Haleakala can take their abundance and reload it back into the truck that goes back to Hana so that they're sharing resources. And we have a similar situation happening here with our Kona Food Hub supplying the food hub over in Waianae on Oahu at the uh, Kahumana Organic Farm and Cafe. Um, we hope to formalize this um, into a network of all the food hubs across the state. But, you know, um, necessity is the mother of invention. So we just started with a friend over at Kahumana contacting us and saying, hey, we need, we need more produce because our CSA also just tripled and can you help us out? And so it's really an exciting time in Hawaii where we're seeing the regions across the state being able to share in their abundance and then support each other so that it's truly like Kamaina local food system. And it's an alternative food system because especially with the CSA model, members are, are putting money into an account up front. So in that respect, they're sharing the, um, the risk of farming. But at the same time, you know, if something changes in their family and they need to quit, whatever their balance is can be refunded. Uh, some families have had to move back to the mainland to take care of uh, family members or for other reasons. And a lot of them are just leaving their balance and saying, hey, just pay it forward to people who are in need. And um, that kind of triggered us to create a new section in the web store called uh, Pay It Forward. And um, Rosie, do you wanna talk about that a little bit? Oh, I don't hear your, no, not, I can hear you, no. Okay, I'll just describe it. Pay It Forward is where a member of the CSA can um, choose a drop-down menu to donate either a 10 or 20, 30, 40, 50, however much they wanna donate. And then those, uh, that 
resource then becomes a supplement where we can offer it to families who are having to quit the CSA because they cannot afford it. We're able to extend um, their supply of fresh fruits and vegetables by a few weeks until they get back on their feet. Maybe they're waiting for their unemployment to come through or their SNAP funds to arrive. Um, we do accept payment by SNAP at our adaptations warehouse. And um, that's been an important part of, uh, you know, reaching out to everyone in our community and making sure that no one gets left behind. So, uh, Rosie, I think that you just weren't close enough to the microphone, maybe, or something, but um, maybe you can elaborate that. I didn't know you all took SNAP, and I know that's been a huge challenge for a lot of people right now is wanting fresh and local but not being able to get it. So how, how would somebody go about using their SNAP to get all this lovely, delicious fresh vegetables and fruits from you all? You're very quiet. It's I think on the. I think the headphones are challenging you right now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe you. just try pulling the <laughs> headphones out. <laughs> Please stand Any by for technical difficulties. Yes, yes, wait. <laughs> Technology is both a blessing and a curse. <laughs> um, so if someone wants to pay with SNAP or EBT, they can sign up to pick up from our Adaptations Warehouse in Keala Kukua. And um, when they come to pick up their box, they initially they need to pay a $50 cash deposit. Um, but then going forward after that, they can pay with their EBT card uh, when they come to pick up their box each week. And um, we're starting to also offer that to people who pick up at other sites if they want to come in to the warehouse once every two weeks or so and pay up front for their boxes. Um, but we uh, are kind of still working on the logistics of that. Um, but for anyone who's able to get to Kealakikua regularly, our pickup day is Friday. Um, and it's a really good option. It's a good way to get local produce. Um, and it's pretty affordable that way. Um, and yes, I, I'm not sure if before I mentioned the payment structure of the CSA, but so basically it stands for community supported agriculture. And the idea is that when people sign up, they make an initial upfront payment that then secures us to be able to pay the farmers and buy the produce, because we know there's a guaranteed demand and people who have committed to getting the food. Whereas, you know, with perishable products, a lot of the time we're kind of taking a gamble, um, especially when sales from restaurants are not happening at all. Um, so it's a way to kind of give security to the farmer while giving security to our food hub and giving local food security for our um, members for the CSA. Um, and so usually they make an upfront payment anywhere from $100 to $500, um, and then they work their way through that over the course of a couple months, um, depending how much they shop in the web store and how much they spend at a time. So that's kind of how the payment structure works. <laughs> and I know when I originally was thinking about signing up, again, not paid advertisement for you all, but... <laughs> Uh, when I was signing up, that was kind of a hurdle for me is I, I did not have a lot of disposable income, but I finally, after probably six months of going back and forth, bit the bullet and put the $100 down, and it's not that bad. Uh, you think it seems like such a large sum, but then when I pay my $100, it'll last me anywhere from, you know, two to three months, and that's something I would probably spend in one month if I went straight to the grocery store. So it's kind of an initial investment instead of just when you go to the grocery store. But I have to say for all of those people out there who haven't signed up because of that little hurdle, like, like myself, do it. It's a hundred percent worth it. <laughs> and it does yeah, save it's you also money. A hundred percent. <laughs> yeah. It's also a hundred percent guaranteed. So if you need to quit the program, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, if you need to quit the program, whatever the balance is in your account gets returned to you by check. So you can, um, 
rest assured that that's, you know, not just money down the drain. It's just a commitment that you're making toward fresh produce. And once, once you really have confidence in the whole program, a number of members will choose to put in a higher increment because we have incentives. So uh, higher increments um, like uh, 200 or 300 get you a 5% bonus. And if you put in 450, you get a 10% bonus. So if you know that you want to spend that you're, you know, you're all in for the CSA, then, you know, that's something else to think about if you have that kind of cash where you can put it in, um, you get a bonus for that and it is guaranteed to be returned to you if you need to quit. Uh, the other thing just to mention about SNAP is that we are restricted by the USDA where we can only receive payment within two weeks of the produce um, being delivered or um, for the member getting the produce. They have this restriction where they have to pay within two weeks. So if you get weekly delivery, that means you need to come into the office twice a month. And if you get a, every other week delivery, then once a month would cover uh, your payment and you just come in to swipe your card with your PIN number. Um, so we're kind of, that's sort of a, a way to stay compliant with their restrictions and still be able to deliver produce to any, any of our pickup locations. You just have to come into our office in Calicico to pay. That's the drawback. I, I have to say, I very much admire how inclusive you all are. I know not everybody has this disposable income, but like you said, if you do and you put in that $100, $200, you're really supporting the community, the farmers, the, the agriculture that's going on. You're investing in your own community, which is fabulous. But then there's also a way to get all of this delicious fresh fruit and vegetables, even if that's not something that you have through SNAP program or this gifting program that you started. And I'm thankful that you started that, um, making sure that our families can get fed out here. And I know that I've had a little bit extra on the side and been able to donate to that. So anybody who has one and has a little extra know that that's going to support our families out here. But that's wonderful. Yeah, immediately that's thank you helping. Enough. Yeah, no, it helps the SNAP members, especially with the $50 up front. Um, we can use money from the pay it forward fund if that's a hardship for them. And um, if they don't feel comfortable receiving a donation, which seems fairly common actually, <laughs> um, we can establish a, a payment plan so that they could maybe every time they come in, they could you know maybe pay $20 until they get to their $50 uh, minimum balance requirement. Yeah. So you, you all are pretty flexible just to make sure everybody has some fresh local food on their table. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to see barriers to that. That is fantastic. Um, maybe, I know Maureen, you wanted to show us around the hub a little bit. I've actually never heard this term until we started talking and setting up uh, this program. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about how this works, what the hub is, and then and show us around. And Rosie, anything else you have to add, jump in there. Uh, it seems like we're explaining things fairly well. Nobody else has questions so far, <laughs> but I'll let you know if they come up. <laughs> yeah, Food Hub is essentially a distribution facility, um, but it's a term that the USDA came up with um, right around 2013 or 2014. I discovered it because um, the Kohala Center, which is a wonderful organization, nonprofit up in Waimea, they encouraged us to apply for the local food producers program grant. And so in 2014, we secured a $75,000 grant from the USDA. And it's the first time we ever applied for a grant or even thought about grants as a, a way of supporting our mission. But what it allowed us to do is um, hire Rosie full time as a Fresh Feast coordinator. Um, she had been on our team since um, 2013, but uh, we just um, had her doing just everything. <laughs> lots of different <laughs> jobs, lots of different hats. And she was on the farm and helping my husband. With, we also have um, medicinal herbs that we raise and we supply a lot of herbalists on the mainland with tropical medicinal plants. And so Rosie's interests are really broad in farming and she had a strong interest in medicine. So she was up there helping with that as well. And, um, so the food hub is a term that we became familiar with back then. And basically it just means a local produce company, but it 
also can um, offer a certified kitchen. We don't have that to, that capacity right now, but it is a dream in the future to have that space where we can then take off grade or number two um, product from the farmers who supply us and make value added products with that, you know, you know, what they call ugly fruit or ugly produce <laughs> now um, is, you know, just as nutritious and healthy and fresh. It just has some, you know, outside scarring or blemishes and what they call the imperfect things. food. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so um, a food hub can help a community capture that kind of potential waste and make it into a valuable product. Um, so I will turn my phone around and hope that this works and you can see this is adaptations office we have a fun wall that we've added to over the years with lots of slogans and then you can see i'm going to show you where rosie's sitting right now there's rosie that's actually my executive desk this is the executive corner of our desk and then she's sitting i don't know if you can see it i'm going to go around the corner She's sitting right Ros by. Rosie must feel very executive right now. Yeah. Yes. I know, it's very fancy. Yeah. So that's a, that's a chill pack maker right there. <laughs> and that machine makes these um, chill packs that you're familiar with that you put in your coolers when you go to the beach. And we keep them in our freezer here. And that lets us FedEx product uh, around the island. This is where we store value added products that we offer in the web store. Um, and then this is our, this is our chill, back of the chill hallway, salad machine. This is our wonderful Fresh Feast team portioning product. This is Ariana and Jojo. And they are getting ready for the next round of CSA. This is our chill. It's 14 by 14 feet and it's filled with local produce and everything we handle is grown here in the islands. Nothing is imported. We buy from Hamakoa mushrooms, Hawaii natural tomatoes, Roy Honda tomatoes, um, Anoano certified organic farm in Waimea. Uh, really fun. Look at these beautiful heirlooms. Those are some of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun. This is our packing area. And outside here, if you come to add a fine. One of our delivery vans, the white. One. Uh oh, I think we lost. I think I think we stepped Did a little too <laughs> far away. <laughs> there you go. Now you're we back. With Kay. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, I lost the Wi-Fi. I have yeah. to say, last week I um, you have those beautiful heirlooms, and whoever grows those, thank you for that because they're my <laughs> favorite. Um, but we we toasted up some of the Ulu Elena bread from sundog and put the heirloom tomatoes on and that was that was Ooh. like lunch for five straight days it was perfect yeah. <laughs> that's great <laughs> i had it for breakfast this morning that ulu olena oh my gosh toasted with goat cheese and heirloom <laughs> tomato and lettuce my husband grew and little microgreens it's amazing <laughs> I had their honey scalp this morning. You guys should try the honey scalp too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> twist Sun twist my arm. Um, <laughs> really an adaptations fan club. Uh, okay. <laughs> because I wouldn't have access to all these things without you guys. So thank you. Yeah. No, it's fun. And it's, you know, a lot of the restaurants that we supply, they also make products on the side. Like Rebel Kitchen in Kaina Liu has Kona Ketchup and Malka mustard that they, um, you know, made the recipe and um, that's a huge seller in the store. We're also partnering with La Lima Food Patch and they are, um, they are down by Safeway and also a local company. And so she makes these wonderful salad dressings. So uh, we have like I the have peanut sauce. Goddess. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, you know, we have pizza night because we get pizza dough from Sundog. And so mm -hmm. uh, once a week we have pizza night and you can put Kona ketchup on the pizza <laughs> and it is outstanding. Uh, I'm not kidding. It's really good. <laughs> Rosie's like, oh my gosh. I don't know. I, I, I don't know about the ketchup, but great, great company to support right now, especially if you want to make a social justice statement, support Rebel Kitchen, yes. for sure. That's right. Um, That's right. As a black owned business. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Buy all that ketchup because it's so good. It's so addictive. <laughs> it's so, so addictive. Once you've had it, it's like, you just can't go back. It's a whole other no. ball game. No, and I mean, we're North Kona, so sometimes the idea of driving all the way down there is a little daunting, especially if you think about the school traffic, which is not a problem right now, um, but being able to just yeah. get a bottle in my CSA, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's pretty spectacular. <laughs> well, and you know, I think that's kind of the value that the CSA brings to the members because um, some of the food hubs are concerned about you know, what happens when the farmer's markets open? Are we going to lose our members that we've been um, nurturing? You know, what will happen post-COVID? Or, you know, will the membership drop? Did we create all this infrastructure for nothing? But honestly, um, I don't think so. I think convenience and quality and um, diversity are all really um, strong reasons to stick with it. I think even once the farmer's markets reopen and you can go and have that interaction personally with farmers, which people value, you can still do that and continue with the online CSA because yeah. the beauty of it is that you are securing it, right? You don't have to race their crack of dawn, like get up at 6 a.m. to drive <laughs> to the market, be sure to get there, you know, to be able to secure your favorites. Instead, you know you have whatever you put in your cart um, you know, that that'll be delivered and uh, it can complement what you find at the farmer's market. So I think um, right. the diversity, the quality, the convenience is really going to keep loyalty. Yeah. And a lot of our products um, aren't available at local farmer's markets because we do go around the island every week and we get, you know, goat cheeses from Waimea and from Puna that you can't find at the KO Farmer's Market or Captain Cook. Um, and also, you know, our Sundog products, their bread and their pizza dough, they're not at a farmer's market either. So, um, you know, we're kind of offering things that, like Maureen said, can complement the things you can find there. Um, and even, you know, we have hot sauce from the Big Island Burn. They're not really in stores or at the farmer's market either. So it's kind of a way to help these niche uh, pr local product lines get to an audience um, and give them a boost. <laughs> so. I mean, speaking as someone, I feel like I have to say, we weren't really friends until I started getting a CSA. I did not know you until I started getting a CSA. So um, the CSA is just so convenient because like you said, there's no mad rush to get to the farmer's market it's on. There's no guessing what might or might not be there. Um, it's, it's grocery shopping, except even more convenient because it's delivered basically to me and I can just go pick it. It's already packaged for those people who are fans of, you know, the target order online and just go pick it up. That's, that's what you're doing, except with your vegetables and your fruits and, and everything that comes in there, honey and bread. And I feel like every week you guys are expanding your store to include so many more things. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm really excited. One of the questions I did product. get ahead of time, um, and that person wasn't going to be able to join us today live, um, meats. I mean, I know we want to <laughs> inspire vegetarian diets, but is there any chance that there'll be meats added to the CSA? We uh, just added some venison from Maui. Uh, we now have venison sticks and venison strips, I believe the product is. Bars. Um, and yeah, bars. Bars, bars, not strips, bars. Um, and that's a brand new thing that we have, and it's shelf stable, like a jerky almost. And, and uh, it's the first meat product we're offering. Um, but if people want to eat local meat, there's also a really cool local meat CSA from Kauna Mono Farms that I would recommend. Um, and they are delivering to Kona once a month. 
So, and that's a great listening. story too, because Kahumanu Farms is partially owned by the chef at Napua restaurant, which has been a long time supplier. I mean, a supporter of local family farms. We've been delivering to Napua since it opened. And the chef there, Keone Regidor, also has a share in the Kahumana um, pig farm. But they, so they're offering a meat box, but it's more than just pig, right, Rose? You guys tried yeah. it out. Yeah, they had local pork, local beef, and venison from Maui. Um, and also locally made like spam and a pork spread and all kinds of cool stuff, hot sauce. It's a really great box. I would recommend it for sure. <laughs> Um, and I think there's a few other meat CSA is happening on the island too, but most of the other ones I think are sold out because they're a smaller scale than Kaumanu at this point. Um, but we definitely recommend it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Tara, in terms of what you were saying about all the offerings in the web store and how we're trying to just add as much, you know, through the stores and farmers markets being closed, we were trying to really make it as much of a substitute for a grocery store as we could because a lot of people were trying to not go to the stores and we wanted to um you know offer everything that you might need you know from your dressings to your sauces to your kimchi or whatever it might be um and it really that really does set our csa apart because most csas it's just like our basic and gourmet shares you just get what you get and it's whatever is abundant at that time um, the Fresh Feast store is pretty unique in that people can actually shop and decide exactly what they want. Um, and, you know, also the fact that we don't have seasons that are set time frames for it is really unique compared to other CSAs like on the islands or um, on the mainland. It's a different, different structure. Yeah, we've heard from members who moved back to the mainland and regrettably had to leave Hawaii to tell us that it's hard to find a CSA like ours because it's a multi-farm year-round CSA and we have the options where you don't have to think about it we'll pick what you get but we also have the custom-made share that gives the member the control over what they get so uh, we preload a shopping cart with $25 worth of product and then they have two and a half days to uh, go into their cart and edit what they want so they can remove the items that don't really um, speak to them and then they can load up the cart with what they uh, would prefer to get and there's no maximum we do ask for a 25 dollar minimum just so that it's worth um, doing the dance so you can pack up that box and move <laughs> it to the convenient pickup location and and i have the custom share and i absolutely love it it's it's so easy to use. It's so perfect. I have to thank you for making it so easy. Um, logging onto that web store is just, it's a piece of cake. It's Rose and I also difficult. subscribe to it. So. <laughs> we both have the custom made share and, you know, otherwise we would never take it home. We would work with it all day and then, you know, walk away and we go home. This way we have our own box personally packed for us. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and most of all, it's wonderful. supporting the farmers in Hawaii and keeping them in business so that they can then plant out because the exciting too, thing too is that these food hubs are picking up all across the state and the demand is there. And now we're starting to supply other food hubs. And so with increased demand, people sometimes are afraid that it's going to create scarcity. But what we found to be true, like when Whole Foods came in, that that additional demand actually spurred production. A farmer knows that they um, have demand, they're gonna plant more. And our relationships with the farmers that are in our network are long-term, right? We're in it for the long haul. So we try not to get stumbled up on, you know, whatever issue might have come up. Um, we don't let it ruin the long-term relationship. We say, okay, let's get past this. And why don't you plant more eggplants because we just got approached by another food hub and we're gonna need 20 times the amount of eggplants we currently have or you know whatever it is right now we're coming into lychee this is my favorite fruit season summertime and the visitors <laughs> always miss out because they never come in the summer but um they miss the lychee the white pineapple the mango the dragon fruit i mean it's just beyond right it's just amazing the kind of abundance that we have here in hawaii and um 
if we can share that with other food hubs across the state, then we're all going to be eating better. We're all going to be more healthy. And if we want to fight this really horrible virus that could be threatening us, the best thing is an immune system that can just throw it back and say, nope, I'm too strong for you. Yeah, and we are in this very lucky place where if we can keep our food on islands, we're not having it shipped in during something like this our risk is so much more diminished at getting the spreading of something like this because we can essentially close down the islands and it's, it's nice to know that we can still feed ourselves and be safe at the same time. So thank you. Thank you for supporting our community and doing that. Um, I know you were worried about uh, trying to fill an hour, but you already did. So <laughs> uh, is there anything else you two want to say before we go? And I, I do want to say thank you for not only doing this, but for opening a lot of our eyes to the convenience, but also the ability to support our community in a very different way than most people think of. So thank you for doing what you do and, and supporting our health and making sure personally I have fresh fresh food every week from local local sources <laughs> well, thanks for having us Sarah this was really great <laughs> glad you're enjoying your CSA share so much <laughs> Good. well and you've been such a shiro and yeah <laughs> helping us out when Nelha closed and <laughs> delivering everyone who is picking up at your location you home delivery every you know every week it's just mind-blowing how <laughs> community-minded you are and thank you so much for doing that it made such a difference and it still makes a difference thank you oh my my pleasure making sure everybody gets their food so that's the perfect way to segue the last thing i'll say for us today if you are watching is that we that adaptations does have room for fresh juices for their csa right now so if you were on the fence about whether to do it hopefully you feel comfortable and confident in signing up now. Um, if you want Nelha as your pickup, at least for the next few weeks, I'll still deliver to your house for you. <laughs> <laughs> but they do have pickup sites all over the island. You even have Hilo pickup sites, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and Ocean View is a new and one. Ocean now we're in Ocean View. That's a big step. So yeah, anybody <laughs> who is out there who's been looking for a CSA, I highly recommend it any way you cut it. Uh, this is a great way to go. It's affordable. And of course, as you can tell, Rosie and Marina are very flexible in how to get things done. So if you have any questions, any comments, you can always leave them here. But I highly recommend just emailing or calling Adaptations and they'll get back to you pretty promptly. I, I always hear back at the oddest hours. You guys have to stop working after hours. <laughs> 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 uh, but with that, thank you everyone for joining us today. I will make sure that the information is in the comment section so you can sign up or you can ask questions. And again, if you need to connect, you can connect through me uh, or you can go straight to Adaptations and Connect. But thank you ladies for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you.